Episode 2, Physics Students, is all about the force of friction. Now, friction can be quite a complicated force to understand, but the basic facts are pretty simple. It depends on what materials you have and how much they're pressed together. If you have a block sitting on a concrete surface, uh, which is very, very rough, and it, you know, the block weighs a thousand pounds or something like that, you're going to have potentially a lot of friction. But if you have a hockey puck sitting on an ice rink, the surface is very smooth and the hockey puck doesn't weigh that much, so you don't have a lot of friction. Now, where is friction from? Well, you have, if you zoom in, for example, as they do here, onto these two blocks, you'll see that any surface has a lot of tiny surface bumps and it has some stickiness because of the atoms on the material surface and that's what causes friction when you have this large block sitting on the concrete surface the concrete surface isn't smooth and neither is the block and the two surfaces they catch together when you push on the block take your block and put it on a smooth wooden floor take a crate and put it on a smooth wooden floor you're going to have less friction than you would if you put the crate on that concrete floor but you're still going to have some friction because any surface, basically, if you zoom in enough on it, it's going to be uh, partly rough in any case. So, physics students, answer me this. The force of friction can occur with sliding objects, in water, in air, or all of the above. Pause the video now and choose your answer. Drum roll, please. The correct answer to the question is that the force of friction can occur with all of the above, you can have friction between sliding objects, as in the example that I gave you at first. You can also have friction in water and in air. If you've ever tried to run in a swimming pool, you notice that as you run, there's a lot of resistance. That resistance is the force of friction, actually. The water uh, resists the movement of your legs as you try to run through. And in air, when you fall through the air, as we'll be finding out more when we talk about free fall and non free fall later in this series of lectures, when you fall through the air, the air is actually resisting the motion of your fall. The faster you go in the air, the more resistance, the more friction that you encounter. Now, here is where friction starts to get a little more complicated. There are really you have friction when you have friction between two surfaces let's call it contact friction so between for example a gigantic concrete block and a smooth wooden floor or something like that when you have that sort of friction contact friction it does not depend on the speed you push that block along at 30 miles an hour and you accelerate up to 90 miles an hour the amount of friction is actually really not going to change all that much we know from experiments that the amount of friction when you're going 30 miles an hour and the amount of friction when that block is sliding along at 90 miles an hour, is, it's about the same, actually. However, that is not the case when you have fluid friction. That's like air resistance or water drag, like when you're running through that swimming pool. Fluid friction actually does depend on the speed. If you have a rock or a cannonball or something falling through the air, and it's falling at 30 miles an hour, you're going to have a certain amount of uh, air resistance. But if that rock speeds up, and as it speeds up to 90 miles an hour, you're going to have that much more uh, air resistance. The air resistance increases with increasing speed. Now let's complicate things one more final step, physics students, but I know that you can handle this. Friction can also occur for objects at rest. How is that possible? Think about this. If you're pushing horizontally on, let's take your book, take your book, push it, set it on the table, and try to give it a slight push. Now, it's not going to move, probably. What's resisting its motion is, in fact, the force of friction. It's called static friction, when you have friction occurring for an object at rest. Let's talk some more about static friction, because it's a kind of confusing aspect of friction. Let's say, again, you have a concrete block. I'm sorry we're dealing with a lot of concrete blocks, but my drawing skills do not extend much farther behind, uh, beyond concrete blocks. Now, let's say this concrete block weighs a 1,000 pounds. Okay, so you have a 1,000-pound concrete block sitting on the floor, and once again, for some reason, you want to push it along. So you're there, and you're trying to push this concrete block, but you can only uh, muster up a small force, and... The force of static friction acts against the force of your push 
cancels it out, builds up as you're pushing on it more and more until you're pushing as hard as you can. The block still isn't moving. Now what's preventing the block from moving? The force of static friction. It is equal and opposite to the force of your push. It cancels out. So the total net force, you add up FP and FS, the total net force is zero. So you get somebody to help you out. This person can increase the amount of force on your concrete block. Okay, so now the total force of your push is somewhat greater. But you both push as hard as you can. You're pushing as hard as you can on this block and it's still not moving. Why isn't it moving? It's not moving because the force of static friction is building up. It builds up and it equals the force of your push. It's equal and opposite to the force of your push, so it cancels it out. The force of static friction canceling out the force of the push makes the net force zero. Finally, you add a third person. Now, the third person allows you to increase your total force even more. But again, the force of static friction, it builds up to a point where it cancels out the force of your push as you are pushing, and so your total net force is again zero. That's static friction. Now let's say that you finally have enough people to get that block moving. What happens then? Well, in that case, you have exceeded the force of static friction because the force of your pull is greater and the force of your push is greater than the force of friction, so you get the block moving. Now here's an interesting fact. You still have friction, you have sliding friction now, but sliding friction is actually a little bit less than the force of static friction. Here's the difference between the two. Static friction is the friction that builds up before the sliding takes place. It's equal and opposite to the push or the pull, and it's somewhat greater than sliding friction. Sliding friction is the friction that occurs when you have a sliding object and it's less than static friction. Now why is this a uh, why is this an important thing? This is the physics behind a skidding car, and it's why you have anti-lock brakes on your car. If your brakes lock up, if the tires lock into place, then you have sliding friction between the car and the surface of the road. And sliding friction is less than static friction. So you have less stopping force than you would have if the brakes and the tires weren't locked up. Anti-lock brakes prevent the tire from sliding and when you prevent the tire from sliding you have static friction between surface of the road and your tire and static friction is greater than sliding friction so you have more stopping force. We'll talk some more about friction and class since it's such a complicated uh, physics topic uh, and even uh, physicists we don't fully understand sometimes what's going on with friction but um, the basics. Uh, now here's another check question for you. Two last check questions for this section on friction. So if you have a gentleman pushing a refrigerator across a kitchen floor at a constant speed, the force of friction between the refrigerator and the floor is what? Less than Sanjay's push, equal to Sanjay's push, equal and opposite to Sanjay's push, or more than Sanjay's push. Now what's the key word? Key word is constant speed, constant speed. Pause the video now and decide what the correct answer is. Are you ready? The correct answer to this question is that the force of friction between the refrigerator and the floor is equal and opposite to Sanjay's push. Key point, key point. The force of friction is always in a direction opposite that of motion. If you're falling through the air, then the force of air resistance is pointing upwards in the opposite direction of your fall. If you're pushing the refrigerator across a kitchen floor, then the force of friction is opposite to the direction of the motion of the refrigerator. Last question now. If Sanjay is pushing the refrigerator across the kitchen floor at an increasing speed, keyword now is increasing, the amount of friction between the refrigerator and the floor is less than Sanjay's push, equal to Sanjay's push, equal and opposite, or more than Sanjay's push? Pause the video now to find out. The correct answer, physics students, is that the amount of friction between the refrigerator and the floor is less than Sanjay's push. What's the key word? The key word is increasing speed. That indicates you have a net force greater than zero. The refrigerator is not in equilibrium, it's accelerating, you have a net force, and therefore the forces don't 
cancel each other out. The force of your push is greater than the force of friction because the total net force is greater than zero. Think about it, and if you still have questions, bring them to class, and we'll explain a little bit more in class tomorrow. That brings us to the end of our second episode, physics students. May the force of friction be with you.